Okay, so I had intended to do this with the last video that I posted, but we had some 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 pretty good uh, mailbags today. So let's go ahead and jump into the mailbag. The first one, this one is a text from the 847, and he says, hey, love your vids. As a Bulls fan, I'm not used to all the winning. Do you think the Bulls will slow down? Listen here, and this, the Bulls will slow down at some point. They absolutely will slow, slow down. They may lose a couple of games back to back. It's going to happen. It's a long season. It happens to everyone. Um, and I, but I, what I, what I trust and what I've said before, I don't know if this Bulls team and the way that they're playing the, and the chip on their shoulder, if they ever lose three games back to back over the course of the season. Now that could very well happen. And if it happens, it happens, but we have to keep in mind, this is a long, long season and you don't always win all the games you should win. You don't always lose all the games that you should, that you should lose. I think we saw some of that in this Bulls winning stretch that they won some games that, you know, maybe they're playing and looking at things that didn't state that they should have won that. Um, but it's going to come around the Bulls. This this momentum will slow down at some point. But I trust this Bulls team to play consistently over the course of the season and to keep themselves in each and every game. But it will slow down. And how they respond to it is going to tell a lot about the makeup of this team as well. Uh, let's get into the next one. This text is from Niles. Uh, Niles says, my bad. I didn't say my name last time. It's Niles. With us on the nine game win streak and with how well that everyone has played their role, what can they do with this current roster to tighten up to finish the season strong? Uh, kind of like what I said is that this team has to get back to moving the ball. Ball movement needs to be key because it does so many things for this team. It causes the defense to rotate. It gets open baskets, also get in transition. And I also think that I would like to see, I know, we, we've seen what the Bulls can do. I would like to see at some point the Bulls play more half-court offense, get back to the pick-and-roll type thing uh, just to prove because when playoffs come, playoff basketball is completely different. You're going to need that half court game as well. Now, I do know that the Bulls and I trust the Bulls have the personnel and the ability to play very, very good half court um, offense. But I want to see a little bit more of that as the season goes on. I think that can help them fi finish the season strong, then fix that third quarter thing that goes on and just get the defense back up to that top, top five to eight area that they were so long in the season before everyone started going down with COVID. So those are the things that I would really like to see come back from this Bulls team. Now we're going to get into voicemail. We've got three voicemails for today. Uh, let's get into this first one. This is from Shay. Yo, hey, it's man. I'm sitting up here watching J.J. Reddick's podcast, right? Well, not really a podcast, but the part of his podcast on YouTube. And he compared us from DeAndre Aiden to Nikola Vucevic and he compared the Chicago Bulls to the Phoenix Suns of last year. And you remember, I commented and said that we could, that DeMar DeRozan was what Chris Paul was to Devin Booker last year. And J.J. Reddick just confirmed my comment, as I said, like a week or a couple of days ago in your comment section. Hey. Do you think that we're a good comparison to the Phoenix Suns of last year? Hey, tell me what you think, man. Peace. So this is a comparison that you hear a lot. Is the Bulls compared to the Phoenix Suns of last year? When you look at them adding Chris Paul, compare that to the addition of DeMar DeRozan, both players, veterans uh, who come into a fairly young team and that just have the poise and they help to improve the team. They give uh, leadership, they give guidance, things like that. Um, so yeah, we're very compared compared to that as far as the Aiton to Vooch com uh, comparisons and stuff like that I won't really get into that because I think they're different players but I understand why that comparison was made but I think we are very comparable when you look at adding a veteran who really just comes in and takes your team to that next ring up takes your team to that next uh, line where it needs to be absolutely I, I think I'd be crazy to, to say that I don't see the see the comparisons there the what I hope and what I think is a little bit different about this team is the depth as well like scoring depth and defensive depth um, I just you know, I really do think that if if Kobe and Io can continue playing like this on this level, it really brings this team into a whole different level because then we can sustain games where DeMar isn't good. We can sustain games if if uh, if Zach Levine is having an offshoot night. All those type of things, I think, make us a little bit different. On top of that, it's my team, so I'm always going to say that I hope that we can be better. But I like that comparison a lot. I actually do like that comparison to the Phoenix Suns of last year a lot. And hopefully it ends up with a final trip for us as well. All right, let's go to my boy, 8 Lies, who leaves a voicemail uh, for us. My boy, hey, how you doing? It's 8 Lies. Man, I ain't uh, called in a couple of days. I'm telling you, I've been long to. But uh, my boy, you see my boy Kobe doing his thing, making me look good, and uh, making the Bulls look good. I'm talking about, man, he is unleashing. You can tell he's getting more mature. 
like, you know, we wanted a couple of years back. You know, we, we, we liked everything that Kobe used to do. He just had a lot of turnover. Now he just, you know, he, he switched it up, man. He doing his thing now, man. He really, he really, he really stepping his game up, man, defense and all. Um, the main reason I called back today, though, um, I guess for the, I guess for the fans who were saying that, you know, Kobe and Io couldn't exist, huh. It's funny now, man, because Donovan, you know, I know he's here in the chitter chat. You no, know, in my perfect world, they probably listen to your show too. But uh, Kobe and Io is a thing now, bro. Just think, just two or three, four days ago, we had fans saying, you know, they can't play together. We got uh, Io, so we don't need Kobe. No, no, no. Donovan said, here, you guys take this. These guys are an item now. We got so many combos on this team. Now you got Kobe and Io working together. Uh, a lot of times you got, uh, even when your boy out there now, because I guess he heard what you said and said you could take all that back. Um, Tyler Cook and what's that boy's name? Uh, the, the tall center we got. I forgot his name. It's the second string center. Uh, he ain't trying to hear that you talking about because once he got in the game, he said he want his minutes back. He been balling. You know, uh, usually when he come in the game, uh, I just seen Levine hit him, DeRozan, um, um, uh, uh, him and, um, Lonzo be a good couple. Lonzo always feed them. You got Zach and DeMar feeding each other. You got, uh, 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 Donovan putting them in together at the same time, and they coming in, killing. Kobe jumping high from boards, steady breaking screens. Uh, I mean, he just on point with his game. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, it, it, it's really a blessing, and it's really good to see, you know, him and Io. I heard Io say something that I didn't know. He said he already had new Kobe, and, you know, they played, you know, they the same age, so they came up through the Rangers playing the high school and all that. Man, it's going down, bro. Hey, I don't care about nothing about no power for it, but when I'm saying that, I don't mean we don't need one. I'm saying there's no other way to get another player like Kobe who got our bench on steroids. We show like 50 points tonight. Man, I'm going to go ahead and leave with that. I had a lot more to say. but uh. All right, Kobe White's improving. This is something I've talked about very heavily. And, you know, a lot a lot of your points there. Kobe, the biggest thing is the confidence, right? Yes, he's improved defensively. He's improved in, in putting the ball on the floor and having confidence and getting to the rim and getting to the cup. And you just see it out there in, in Kobe's po poise and the way that he's handled himself. His confidence is at an all-time high right now. His confidence may be at the highest that it's been in his whole NBA career. And it could get easier and better for him in coming off the bench, in Alex Caruso coming back. You know, the, the thing that, Kobe's improved defense is going to look that much better when he's out there with even better defenders. So putting him out there with an IO and and a and a um an Alice Caruso is gonna like make that be even more impactful. So I yeah, I mean Kobe White's improvement is huge. And then, you know, that's why shout out to Brandon Peck again, who like mentioned if Kobe continues his play, does he have a chance at most most improved player of the year? And I think he absolutely does. And so we'll see. We'll see. If he keeps shooting at, at an efficient level, again, I'm not expecting the scoring output to be 20 points or anything like that. But if he keeps scoring efficiently, yeah, man, this team, it really unlocks a whole different level to this team in which you can keep that scoring pressure up, right? Keep that scoring pressure up even when Levine has to sit down, even when DeMar has to sit down, even when Vooch may not be having the best night of his shots falling. Or, or Lonzo's fa shots falling at that. It really also allows Lonzo to really, if his shot isn't falling, to focus in more on defense as well because now you have a hot hand in Kobe who can come out there with you as well and you can feed that hot hand. It really does unlock so many different things with this Bulls team. So there you go. Uh, last voicemail. We're actually going back to Shay on this one and here, here we go with this. Hey, yo, hey, what's up, man? This is Shay. Uh, I was listening to a couple of people talk about Ayo DeSumo and, you know, they said a good comparison for him is Marcus Smart. Now, he's a little bit more level-headed than Marcus Smart, but, like, they said due to the fact that he started out as a point guard and he's come into the league with, as a defensive stopper and he was known as a scorer, scoring 17 points a game in college. They said Marcus, they pointed out that Marcus Smart did the exact same thing. So I wouldn't be surprised if he turns into a Marcus Smart of the of the NBA. 
our version at least and with a much more level head. So that's so, so that's so, so that's who I think so that's what I think about when I think of Io DeSumo because his numbers are very similar to Mark Smart and he and he, he plays good defense like Mark Smart. Io's comparison to Marcus Smart. Here's what I don't I don't really like if you guys can't tell or not, comparing other players to players like kinda in the last one with the Aiton to Vooch uh, comparison. I don't really like doing that because while players could have similar uh maybe maybe um skill sets, um it's different like mindsets completely change things. The makeup of teams completely change things. Now I do think that Io is what Io is going to be a player in this NBA for a very long time. I think anyone who doesn't understand and acknowledge that they're just missing the boat. Uh, but so with that being said, Io being you know having that comparison to Marcus Smart, who's just been consistent on that Celtics roster for so long now. Um, and you know at one point people thought he was going to take over as the starting point guard with Rondo. If Rondo left. And then it became, uh, you know, the, uh, Isaiah Thomas came in there and then uh, Kyrie Irving for a little while. And then at, at the end of the day, Marcus Smart has still been there contributing, getting his minutes, playing solid ball. And in that in that area, yeah, I was going to be a lot like that for this Bulls team for a very long time coming. Um, so, yeah. I understand the comparison, but I think Io's ceiling is just so high right now that I really don't want to put a cap on it by comparing Io to really any other player right now. I just don't want to do that because we'll see how he continues to develop. And the way that he adapts, like using that Bradley Bill suggestion right away and putting that into practice, don't let those things miss you. Not every player can do that. Even if they get advice, they it's very hard for some players to, to put that in practice right away. We're seeing Io and him, uh, DeMar DeRozan, taking him under his wing can really help this player develop so much more. So we'll see how Io develops over the course. Hopefully that continues to be in a Bulls uh, jersey for a long, long time to come, and we'll continue to see that. But that's it. That's my time today. Thank you so much for, for joining me today, guys. Uh, like I said before, I will have a halftime hangout. I will also have a post-game show live as well after the Mavs game tonight, and I very well may have a pre-game show as well. So we'll see what's going on if I do that pre-game show today. I will say going forward, I will look at doing more pre-game shows and like pet rallies or whatever we're going to call them before games on weekend games specifically. So during the week, it's going to be very difficult, but on weekend games specifically, I think that's something I could do for you guys more often. Let me know down below what you guys thought about uh, the pregame show. It was my first time doing that for the last game. So let me know what you think about that. Um, but that's it for me. Like I liked it. Oh, before that plugs, I got to get better on this. Make sure you're following us at bull central pod. You can send us any uh, feedback, question, comments, concerns, bullcentralpod at gmail.com. If you want to leave a text and voicemail like was read and played on this video, you can do so at 773-270-2799. Ah, that's it. That's it. This is Chicago Bulls Central. We're the number one place for all Bulls content um, and news. So, uh, yeah, like I liked in every video on, man. I love you guys. Go Bulls. See you guys tonight. Peace. This has been a presentation of The Break Break Media. Break Media. Media.